Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you all are doing fine and dandy today. In today's video, we're continuing <coughs> with the Nightwish season of things. We're on the second to last album that I've listened to, but it's the last album that I have a physical copy of, and that is Wishmaker. Wishmaster, sorry. So, as usual, I'm gonna review the album and I'm gonna state all the songs and then say what my favourites are. So, I think I've mentioned before, but in case I haven't, I do like Nightwish, but I've pretty much listened to only the albums that Taria has done, because she is the singer of Nightwish in my eyes, where the other two, nothing against the other two, they both can sing, and I actually listened to the most recent one, Floor Jensen, in her past bands, but for Nightwish, I truly believe that Taria is like the soul of Nightwish, so I only really listened to the albums that she was on. So, I'm going to get into it in a minute, but before I get into it, I just want to remind people to like and subscribe down below. If you are into music and if you're into people reviewing and reacting to music, that is what I'm here for. So, if you like and subscribe, we'll be besties. So here is the physical copy of Nightwish, the Wishmaster, Wish, mate, yeah, Wishmaster. <laughs> um, and I would say that this is probably slightly more popular than Oceanborn. I think they changed the sound slightly to a more popular sound for symphonic rock. So yeah. So as you can see, per usual, the CD is at the back, and then on the front, as as you saw in the other clip, that <coughs> the cover's here, so this is what the cover looks like. So I'm going to read the songs on here, on my computer. I think I can read them all this time, which is quite shocking. Normally they have like a lot of unique names, but this one's more easier to read. So... The first song is She Is My Sin. The second one is the Ken Slayer. The third one is Come Cover Me. The fourth song is Wanderlust. And then the fifth one is Two for Tragedy. The second one is Wish Master. The seventh song is Bear Grace Misery. The eighth one is Crownless. The ninth one is Deep Silent Complete. The tenth one is Dead Boys Poem. And the eleventh one is called Fantasmic. Struggled to say the last one of it, but I think I said that right. So as per usual, anything that I react to, even though for the most part of what I buy, I can listen to the full album, no problem. I do have favourites with everything and this is no different. So I have four, sorry, I have six favourites. Um, so I'm going to state them in order of like which one's my favourites and explain why I like them, whether it's the lyrics, the vocal ability, or just the sound. First one my, of my favourites is The Kinslayer. So, this one is very dramatic, I would say, which I do like a dramatic song, so it makes sense that I like it. So, it's very fast and it's... I would say that the, um, the guitar and the drums is quite... I wouldn't say heavy, but it's a prominent sound in this song. So I like the fact that they sound more prominent. And Toria is talking fast in this, almost like she's doing an operatic version of a rap, which I think goes quite well. So she's talking really fast with certain parts of the songs, and it's a bit of a creepy, spooky song as well. Like, there's lyrics in there that has to do with, like, sacrificial practices which adds to the 
dramatic spookiness of the song. So I just like the whole mix of the sound and the fast speaking and the fact that every now and then in the song she'll bring in kind of a sentence or a word that is like a sacrificial practice. So I think it goes really well together. So all in all, that's what I like about that song. Next one is called Come Cover Me. So I would say that this one has a bit more of an Ass McFerrick sound to it compared to the Kinslayer. So instead of being quite dramatic and intense with the beat, it's slightly slower, even though there is still a guitar and a drum beat to it. <laughs> It's more, like I say, it's definitely got more of an airy feel to it than me. But I like, she's using more of her long-lasting voice on this. And that's something that I've always liked about singers that can do that. So, I like that sound where she's using more of a voice. But then also the lyrics is very, like, gentle and it's very... You know, um, it reminds me of, like, what a kid feels like when they feel upset about something bad has happened to them and they just want to be loved and, and cuddled. It's like she's coming through that feeling as a kid from an adult's perspective and singing about it. So it's very much, the lyrics are about that. You know, come help me, I need love kind of thing. Just come cuddle me, basically. My next favourite is Two for Tragedy. So this one I do listen to a lot. I would say from the Night Wish playlist that I do listen to, they do do a lot of like slow songs. And I would say this one is probably one of the slower ones that that is more of a ballad than a rock anthem, if, if that makes sense. It is one of my favourites. Um, she shows, Taria shows a lot of her vocal range on this that I think that she hasn't shown yet on the album because it's number five. So it's nice to hear her do longer notes and the lyrics in it is just so good. It's basically... What I can gather is talking about suicide, but with a mother and a child. It's like, Nightwish is known for doing parent love lyrics. Like, the feelings that we have for our kids and the kids, how they feel about the parents. So, a lot of their lyrics is a lot to do with that. And this is a classic one, but this one is... What I can gather, like I say, is about suicide. So I think the child has died, and the mom is basically singing about how she feels, and that when she feels like she's gotten over it, she hasn't really. The next favorite is Wishmaster, so the song title of the album. <clears throat> this gives me a similar feeling to um, the Kinslayer which is, like I say, sounds quite spooky and creepy with the lyrics. This one gives me that kind of similar vibe, but in my opinion, and from what I can hear, she shows a lot of her vocal ability a lot more on this one than, than the other song. So I do like the sound of the song, but I like it. I like the song more because she does a lot more longer notes. So I'll listen to it for that reason. But yeah, I would say they are quite similar. When it comes to the lyrics. I wouldn't say it's as creepy and as spooky as the other one. But it still has that same feeling. So for this one, the reason why it's my favourite is more because of the beat. But more the beat. It's my favourite because of the vocal um, contrast and the vocal long-lasting ability. I think I'm actually going to change one of my answers. I've just listened to two songs and I actually think I prefer one more than the other. So I'm going to replace uh, Bear Grace Misery to, to Deep Silent Complete 
because I think I do slightly prefer that more than the other one. So, <clears throat> Deep Silent Complete is very much a vocal love that I do have for the song. That's probably why it's my favourite. But I do also like the lyrics. From what I can gather, and like I say, this is just my opinion, this is all this channel is, it's one got a music lover's opinion on what the lyrics are trying to say, so that doesn't mean that it's right, it just means it's what I think. I think that it's a message of like, someone who feels lost or they feel like the voice can never be heard, so they just don't voice their opinions or voice their concerns about anything. So it's all about silence, but they feel complete in silence because they are quite introverted. So it's kind of like an introvert's song anthem in a way. So the last one of my favorites is Dead Boy's Poem. So this is a very, very emotional song. And I think the way that they did it when it comes to the production and the sounds is just perfect. They very, they're very good at like mixing sounds with different emotions. But I think with this track on this album, it's the best that they've done it. I think the way they've done it is perfect from like not going into the typical symphonic stuff and just going more classical for the emotional stuff. Um, as you can tell probably by the title of the, of the track, it's a very emotional song and it's literally about a poem that a son written for his mom after he committed suicide. So, in the poem, in the song, sorry, he's actually stating some words in the poems before and after and in between the song actually begins. So within the song, there's like a boy voice within there and he's playing the role of the son, basically quoting some sentences within the poem that he wrote about why he basically committed suicide. And obviously it's a very emotional song, but it's not just the emotion for me. Obviously the emotion is a massive part of it, but Taria shows so much of her vocal ability on it, like, she goes quite long with a lot of it, and like I say, the production is spam. Okay, I think I've mentioned ev um, all of my favourites, and I think I've said pretty much everything that I needed to say. Um, so, I would probably recommend this to people who have a classical love to them, because even though Nightwish are technically a rock band, a lot of their music is classical sounding and they have more of a sad dramatic lyric which is very typical classic opera and and obviously Taja, if, if you know who Nightwish is, she is a classical trained opera singer so she is very talented, love her so I would actually suggest that people who wouldn't say that they're rock fans would actually listen to Nightwish because it has a more of a classical theme to it, a operatic theme to it, and maybe that could get them into rock music. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you have a great day and love ya.